yourself, especially when romance is involved. Well, this is the easiest trap in the world to fall into. Chicago is the locale of our story tonight. Very well, Mary. Pat? Now, this one I put away for you the minute it came in. I wanted you to be the first to see it. Oh, I love that. Yes, I thought you would. It's perfect, isn't it? Absolutely perfect. But um, have you make it up for me in blue, cocktail length, and uh, with a fuller skirt. Oh, and for heaven's sakes, have him get rid of all the geegaws around the deck. Call me when he's ready for a fitting. Goodbye, Miss Ford. Yes, goodbye, Miss Cartwright, and thanks again. All right, Pat. Whew. Clay, will you mark that order up, Miss Cartwright? Please? Mrs. Cartwright thought the pink evening ensemble with a diamond detail was perfect. Absolutely perfect. So she ordered it in blue, cocktail length, and without the detail. Who's the doctor? What doctor? You just had a call from someone named Donna, and I quote, The doctor is in town, so stand by. Stand by for what? <laughs> I hate to disappoint you, Edith, but Donna is an old college friend of mine. She has a cousin who's a doctor and he lives in New York and when he comes to Chicago, she calls me. Because I'm one of the few people who remember the lost start of Contract Bridge. And Dale loves to play bridge. Dale? You had some calls from a Dale last month. That's right. Oh. He was here last month working at the clinic. I suppose he's back now to finish the job. I suppose. Honey, he's a married man and he has four sons. Now, what's the matter with you? Nothing. It's just that I distinctly remember your mentioning on several occasions how much you disliked playing cards. So, what's the matter with you? Honestly, Edith. The man comes to town a couple of times a year and we play cards. Which you say you dislike. Well... And yet you break all your other dates just to be there. Oh, now, don't you deny it. I watched you do it last month. You didn't say very much about your dates with this Dale. But at the time, I just bet my bottom dollar it was a charming married man from out of town. The conversation is ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It is also none of my business. Well, but I have a story. Short, sweet, and, well, maybe not so sweet, but to the point. Mm -hmm. When I was in the theater... A quarter of a million years ago. I was rehearsing the play. Yeah. And one night I brought the leading man home to dinner. Yeah. And after he left, Mother said, Edith, he's married, isn't he? And I said, yes. And I poo-pooed the whole thing, insisting that he was just a friend. And after all, what in the world was wrong with bringing a friend home to dinner? Mother just looked at me and repeated, he's married. Don't open that door. Well, I opened the door. I continued to see him. Oh, it was all perfectly innocent. But I fell so in love that it took me years to get over him. You know, I never did quite make the grade. And perhaps that is why it still says Miss Edith Landau on the sign today. Honey, Dale really is just a friend. Case dismissed. <laughs> you know, you should have stuck with your acting. Ta-da! <laughs> Donna? Ah, I understand our friend's back in town. Hello, Raj. Well, I forgot to ask you about school. How's it going? Beautiful. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I asked about school, not little Lee. 
Yeah, well, you remember our talk. After all the years, you know. I know you will. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, good luck in the game tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Good night, boy. Oh, uh, put Mrs. Cheney back on, will you? I'm sorry. There won't be a minute. Well, take your time. But reverse the charges, Dr. Sergeant. I wish I had stock in a telephone company. Hello, Mrs. Cheney. Well, they all seem fine. Thank you for taking such good care of them. Uh, tell Mrs. Sergeant I'll call her in the morning. Good night, and thank you again. <laughs> I wish I did, too. Let me in you didn't speak to Margaret? Wonderful. No, she's on a new medication. At this time of night, she's usually pretty woozy. She's not any worse. No, no worse. Look, would you mind terribly if we played a new hand? After all that father talk, I've completely lost track of the bidding. Good evening. It's a good idea. But first, some more coffee. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to insist that you both eat that dessert. It'll be a pleasure, darling. Come along, honey. Mother needs help in the kitchen. I think it's your deal. Yes. Do you call them every night when you're away? Oh, yes. I don't like leaving them, but this research at the clinic is pretty important, and Mrs. Cheney's wonderful with them. Has your wife been ill for a long time? Yes. Yes, she has. Excuse me a minute, please. What have you been up to this past month? Oh, nothing much. Oh, come on. Whenever I think of you and Donna and Cal, I all see you busy doing things. Such as? Well, whenever I'm here, we all seem to be going places. <laughs> Theater, some new restaurant, playing bocce or Ricardo's. <sighs> so that horrible picnic. <laughs> Do you remember that, or have you blotted that out of your mind? I remember all our times together. <laughs> We're a good group. Yes, that we are. How about dinner and a show next Tuesday? Oh, Tuesday would be fine with me, if it's all right with Don and Cal. Good, we've got a date. And if they're not free, we'll just have to rough it alone. That'd be all right, wouldn't it? Of course. After all, we don't need a chaperone that at our age. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> I just asked because, well, we never have been out together. I mean, just the two of us. No, I guess we haven't, have we? But then, as you say, we're a good group. I didn't know whether you wanted it that way or... What do you mean? Oh, well, I... I never gave it a thought. Oh, I have. I've given it a lot of thought. Up. Here we go. We'll all get back together. Oh, <laughs> well, that really does look good. Mm -hmm. I think I'm ready for it now. Janet, now I've got a dinner date for Tuesday. Can you two join us? Oh, sorry. No, we can't. We're going to Cal's mother's. It's her birthday. I told you, remember? Oh. I'll get the coffee. Well, um... Do we still have a date? Yes. Well, I'd be glad when that doctor of yours goes back to his New York patients. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you're just dead on your feet with all this gadding about. Well, he's leaving today. We had the goodbye party last night in the pump room. Oh, I never danced so much in all my life. Excuse me. Miss Moore, there's a doctor sergeant out here looking for you. Oh. Uh, tell him I'll be right out. Uh, Shorthand of bridge before parting. Oh, you're terrible. <gasps> hello. Huh? Oh, hello. <sighs> you're loaded. I have presents for the boys. I was in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd stop by and... Uh... Say goodbye again. Oh, that, that was very nice of you. You know, it's a very good thing for us. You only come to town twice a year. We're all exhausted. Oh, don't worry. It was well worth it. Oh, good. Now, when are you coming to New York? Oh, someday. Oh, come on. You show me Chicago. It's only fair that you let me show New York to you. Well, I can't make any plans right now. You see, our buyer is going to New York next week, and I'll be needed around here. Well, what about your summer vacation? Summer in New York isn't exactly my idea of a vacation. I'll Sorry. get lots and lots of tickets to all the air-conditioned theaters. Well, now that sounds interesting. It's a Maybe Don and Cal and I could fly in for a long weekend sometime. Well, let's plan on it. Hmm? I can get seats to any of the shows. Some of my sickest patients are producers. <laughs> well, I'll talk to Don about it. Oh, look, let me give you my number. All right. Um, oh. well, here, wait a minute. Let me help you. There you are. Uh -huh. 
I want you to promise to call me as soon as you get to New York. Thank you. I certainly will. Professional business. Mm -hmm. There you are. Thank you. Well, goodbye, Jenny. Goodbye, Dale. And thanks again for everything. And uh, you call me. Promise? Oh, I promise. Bye. But of course I understand, Andrea. Well, it couldn't be simpler, darling. Janet can go to New York for me and look over the Paris line, and I'll fly out to the coast tomorrow night and help you with the mess out there. Of course she wouldn't mind, would you, darling? You wouldn't mind going to New York next week just for a few days, would you? I have to go to the coast. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't mind at all. As a matter of fact, I've been wanting to fly in and catch some of the new shows. She'd love it. And she wants to see some of the new shows, so you call somebody and get her a fistful of tickets. Oh, no, thanks. That won't be necessary. I have a friend who can get them. Forget about the tickets. She has a friend. I beg your pardon. Is this seat taken? No, it isn't. Dickie? Janet Forbes. Dickie Sharp. I haven't seen you since high school. Oh, nobody's called me Dickie since high school either. <laughs> do you still live in Chicago? Yes, yes, I do. Do you? Surely. Oh, isn't this nice? Are you married? No. Are you? Five years and three children. Oh, how nice. <laughs> you going to New York on a pleasure trip? No, no, on some business, and I'm going to see some of the shows, too. I hope you've got tickets. I understand it's terribly hard to get into anything that's worth seeing. Yes, I guess it is, but fortunately I have a friend. Uh, he's a doctor, and some of his patients are producers. He says he can get some tickets. You've got a doctor friend. You're not married, but you're going to be. Is that the kind of business you've got in New York? <laughs> no, 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 it's nothing like that. He, he's just a friend of a friend of mine, that's all. Oh. Now, tell me about your children. How old are they? Oh, well, Debbie, that's the oldest, mm -hmm. is four. He's just a friend of a friend of mine, that's all. Two and a half. And you know very well that is not. Every time you say it, you're only trying to convince yourself that everything's all right, and it isn't. It's rotten. He's a married man, and you can't wait to be with him. Well, you're not going to be with him. You're attracted to a man who's attracted to you, and he's got a sick wife. Now, if that isn't a perfect setup for a messy affair. <coughs> You're not going to see him again, and you're not going to call him. You've opened the door too far as it is. Well, Miss Forbes, just shut it. Just shut it. All right. It's shut. Believe it. When did you get into town? You should have let me know. I didn't get in until late last night. And... Well, if this isn't a bit of luck, come sit down and have some coffee. Uh, we'll make some plans. Well, uh, Look, there's a table over there. It's simply wonderful. Uh, I can't believe it. Well, at least it saved you the price of a telephone call. Morning, Maggie. Two coffees, please. Coming right up, Doc. Now, toast, sweet roll, juice, anything you want. I'm going to see your stay in New York is absolutely perfect. No, thank you. Just coffee. I, I really should be on my way. You know, I simply can't get over it. Of all the places in New York, I come in here every morning for coffee. Well, the gods are on our side, I guess. How long are you going to be here? Uh, a week, I think. I'm not, I'm not sure. Only a week? You will have to move fast. Have you decided what shows you want to see? Oh, well, I'm afraid that most of my time is going to be taken up with the showings. You see, I'm here to look over the Paris lines, and, oh, that means lots of cocktail parties and loads and loads of wooing to talk those designers into changing the styles to fit our Midwestern customers, you know? Well, when am I going to see you? 
What, Excuse me. Please. Thank you. I, I, I don't know, Dale. Honestly, I don't. I... When's your first free moment? Well, I, I really... Oh, thanks, huh? You're welcome. I, I really can't say. You see, I, I just got in last night, and, and I hadn't had a chance to... You weren't going to call me, were you? in Chicago. That's it, isn't it? Well, it sounds so silly when you put it into words. No. Go on, please. Well, in, in Chicago, you're Donna's house guest. You're out of town, and I'm helping her to entertain you. And that's all right. But here, it would look like a lone woman looking up a married man. I'm sorry, I don't mean it to be. I just don't want unimportant values like caring about appearances to take away the feeling we have for each other. Believe me, I don't care a thing in the world about what people think. But I do care about us, about me. Nothing could take away the feeling that I already have about you, Dale. I just want to be very careful that I don't add to it. I don't want that sign to end up reading Miss Janet Forbes. Oh, never mind. That, that's a family joke. You wouldn't understand it. Bye, Bill. Lovely, and show those earrings with it, will you? All right, Pat, may I see the back of this? That's pretty. Show it to Mrs. Thackeray when she comes in. She'll hate it, but it'll look wonderful on it. Excuse me. Hello? Yes? Oh, Donna. Oh, I didn't recognize your voice. Oh, it's been such a long time. How have you been? Europe? Oh, you're a lucky girl. Oh, you must have had a wonderful time. <laughs> yes, well, someday I hope to. Mm -hmm. He is? Oh, no, I haven't. Uh, uh, well, no. No, Donna, I I'm sorry. The uh, good group will have to do without me tonight. I have a date with my fiancé. <laughs> well, no, we haven't exactly set the date yet, but... Uh... Yes, of course I will. And uh, wish Cal and Dale a Merry Christmas for me, will you? Thanks. And, and let's not be such strangers in the new year, huh? All right, Donna. Bye. Everybody wants a red dress for Christmas. Oh, boy, will I be glad when this is all over. Hey. You look like you could use a little pick-me-up yourself. Oh. I know what. Why don't I take you to dinner tonight, and then you can take me to a show? It's fine with me. I have no plans. Who's she getting married to? I don't know. We only talked for a moment, and I haven't seen her since... Well, since you were here last, in the spring. Yeah, I ran into her in New York shortly after that. Didn't she mention it? No. Where? Oh, this little coffee shop where I have breakfast every morning. One day I walked in, there I was, face to face with Janet. I wanted to see her, take her to some shows, but she wouldn't go. For pity's sake, why not? <laughs> That's pretty silly, and it's no way to treat my favorite cousin. Yeah, I thought it was kind of silly at the time. Later, I realized I was beginning to fall in love with her. Maybe she was with me, too, a little. Anyway, she saw what was happening, put an end to it. Well, that only made me more in love with her. I mean, really in love. Oh, 
It's warming. And that heavenly stuff you smell is air. Yes. Uh, oh, uh, I'm Janet Forbes. We have a reservation for oh. two. Yes, Miss Forbes. We've been expecting you and Miss Landau. <laughs> Thanks. Welcome to the summer house. You're in uh, 102. Will you sign in, Janet, and I'll go up and make that call? Yes, surely, dear. Andy, is my car ready? I'm on my way up to pack now. I'll check, Mr. Higgins. Andy? Yes. How's the water skiing? Oh, you better ask Mr. Higgins here. He's been our champion. Oh. It's great. Charlie's the best driver. See, I seem to think someone across the lobby is trying to get your attention. been here every summer for a cup of coffee. <laughs> no, I've never been here before in my life. How are you? I'm just fine. And you? Oh, pretty good. Well, it's certainly a surprise to see you here. Though I don't know why it should be. We seem to bump into each other in the strangest places. <laughs> don't we? Uh, have you been here long? A week. Oh. But well, we're just checking in. Yes, so I see. Are you going to stay long? Oh, a week or so. Uh-huh. Is your family with you? Oh, yes, yes. The boys picked this place. Oh. I wanted to go to the ocean. How are they? Fine. Big and noisy. <laughs> and your wife? She died last January. Oh, Dale, I, I, I'm awfully sorry. Thank you. Well, i better get along and see what the boys are doing. It's good to see you, Janet. Yes, it was nice seeing you, too. But then I'll, uh, I'll be seeing you around, won't I? Well, we, we might be leaving in the morning. So if I don't see you, I'll say goodbye. Uh, which way is 102? Right around the corner to your left. Thank you. Now, aren't you glad you put a stop to it when you did? Men, honestly. When they're all tied up, they make you think, oh, if they were only free. But when they are free to do something legal about it, it's always a very different story. I wish you wouldn't go on about it, Edith. I'm glad I took your advice, and now I'd like to forget it. Just for the record, however, I never said he was interested in me. I only said I was interested in him. Oh, uh, I'm afraid we'll have to be leaving in the morning. Would you have my bill made up, please? Certainly. Gee, I'm sorry to hear that, Doctor. So yes, long, Andy. Thanks for everything. So long, Mr. Higgins. Come back again soon. Didn't that man just check in? No, just leaving. I thought I saw him checking in with his wife about an hour ago. His wife? Oh, I know. He was standing there when Miss Forbes checked in. Miss Forbes? Yes. She's in 102 with Miss Landau. Will you have dinner with me? Oh, I I'm sorry. I'd like to very much, but I'm here with Miss Landau. Good. She can babysit for the boys, will you? Please. Please. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What happened? I, I mean, that's I had I you married to a man named Higgins. You what? <laughs> Never mind. I'll explain later. Will you please? Just the two of us. Please. I'd love to. If I am but faithful to my duties of the present, God will provide for the future. Oh, good night. And we'll see you next week.